Shalom, and welcome back to the teaching on the complete Aleph Tav. I know that you've had a lot of teaching already about what the Aleph Tav means, and we've discussed it uh, in, the, in the series from the very beginning, that the Aleph and the Tav are the direct object marker and what that means. We've uh, discussed about counting the number of Aleph Tavs that are in Tanakh. We've also seen that Aleph Tav can mean with. Uh, there are three other meanings for the combination of these letters, and today we're going to see that Aleph Tav also is a word that means plow or plowshare. As in this well-known scripture from Isaiah 2.4, And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. This is Etim. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The word is also occasionally transfer, uh, translated as the word coulter, and this is a picture of a plow, of a more modern kind of plow, with a coulter. The coulter is part four. So the coulter is the blade which runs in front of the plow to make the furrow and clear out the stones and make a distinct area in which the plow is then going to come, the plow blade is going to come behind it and cut up the roots that are in that furrow and prepare the ground to receive the seed. We know that uh, Yeshua said that he will always make a way for us to go. Now this is part of the picture of the plow. Proverbs 3, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah 40, verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Yahweh, to make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And in Isaiah 45, 13, I have raised him up, speaking of Cyrus, in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let Go, my captives, not for price nor reward, saith Yahweh of hosts. So Yeshua is the olive tab. He is the plow which directs our ways, makes our way straight, and clears the way for us to go. Additionally, when we see the image of Israel being planted in the land, that the stones are taken out of the way so the crop can grow well. Isaiah 5.2 And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein and he looked that it should spring forth grapes but it brought forth wild grapes. Again in Isaiah 62.10 Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. So part of the process of plowing, and specifically the role of the coulter there, is to get the stones out of the way. As Yeshua taught in his parable of the seed, the stones present a problem for the growth. Matthew 13, 5. Some, some of the seed fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And then he further elucidates to the disciples what did he mean by this in Matthew 13, 20. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. So he compares those stones to what pre prevent the seed from going, growing in a person's heart, and those stones are tribulation or persecution. Then we become offended and we cast the seed of, of Yahweh out of our heart because our heart is stony. A good seed cannot grow in a stony soil. It cannot take good root. 
Another teaching about plowing, which comes from the Word of God in Deuteronomy 22.10, it is written, Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. In other words, if you have two different animals yoked together, they cannot coordinate their action and they cannot cooperate. And one will go faster and one will go slower. Maybe one will try and go in a different direction. So we need two of the same animal to plow adequately. And Paul explains again in 2 Corinthians 6.14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. So in our, um, of course, in marriages or any business work that we do, we need to be working believers with believers. We see actually a complete picture of the process through these two letters. As we look at the oldest paleo, we can definitely see that the olive on the right is the head of the ox. And the olive, as you know, represents a strength and also it represents even Elohim, God, the first cause. And the Tav on the left represents the mark. So we can see those two pictures. And even in a later script, again, you can see a more stylized ox head on the right and the cross, the two crossed sticks on the left. So this is a picture of an ancient plow, which is called an ard, which is a word which comes from some Old Norse. And it, in fact, looks like that cross, those two cross sticks. It is the plow. So together, we see the olive, the strength of the animal, which is pulling the plow. And then we see the top. We see the actual plow following along behind it. It's the complete process of plowing. We have the animal pulling the plow, the olive, and the plow, the tav. Now this is what Yeshua taught about plowing. Luke 9.62 Yeshua said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Once we begin this process, of what the world would call evangelism. We have the strength and the power and the spirit of the Father, the Elohim, the Aleph, and we understand the truth of the gospel, the truth of the cross, the good news, that the perfect sacrifice has been made on our behalf so that we can be reconciled to the Father. And in fact, that tab, that plowing, that understanding marks us forever. And we begin by the power of the Spirit to take this good news of the cross. We begin to prepare the fields. We begin to prepare to plow up the ground of the world so that they can receive the seed of the word of God. Once we have begun this process, we should never turn back to the world because there's nothing in the world. God has has uh, ordained us and fashioned us from the foundation of the world to continue in this good work which he has prepared for us to do, to spread the good news, to plow the ground, to plow the fields of this world, to receive his word. Next time we'll go on to yet another meaning for this word, Aleph Tav. In the meantime, Tasimita Inayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.